The first stage of any negotiation is preparation. And in this video, I'm going to cover the things you need to think about and do during the preparation stage of your negotiations. Begin with the end in mind. That's the advice in Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's habit number two. And that works very well as advice for the preparation stage of a negotiation. Begin with the end in mind. Think about what you want to achieve, the outcome you're looking for. And the first thing to really focus on in the preparation stage is the whole goal of your negotiation. What is it that you want? Once you know what you want, what your goal is, it's time to think about your objectives. What are the measures of a successful outcome for you? And we can think of objectives for a negotiation in terms of three things. First, there's what you want to get, all the things you want to have as a result of this negotiation. And secondly, there's how much you are prepared to exchange for this. And the third thing is the conditions, the conditions that you want to attach to the negotiation and the conditions you're prepared to accept from the negotiation. Put all of that together and what you're effectively doing is writing the agreement from the negotiation in some detail. Some people like to think of objectives in terms of the SMART framework to make sure your objectives are well written. And there are lots of different ways you can articulate the SMART framework. My preference for negotiation purposes is to think of S for specific. Be as specific as you can about what you want to achieve and what you're prepared to give and the conditions that you might impose or might be prepared to accept. And when I think about specific, I think that measurable quantities is part of specific. Therefore, the M of SMART stands for meaningful. There is no point in going into a negotiation unless you can achieve meaningful outcomes. It's a waste of time otherwise. Some people like to haggle and they end up wasting time on negotiations that they could just settle by pressing a buy button on a web page. So think about the meaning and the value of the negotiating process and make sure that it's all going to be worthwhile. The A of SMART stands for achievable. There is no point identifying preferred outcomes, preferred cost that you know isn't going to be achievable. Do your research, figure out what's available and how much you might expect to pay for it. And yes, a good negotiation will get you the best terms available and maybe even marginally better terms than are available, but they're not going to revolutionize the whole world. You are not going to change the laws of supply and demand and of physics. I'm going to have R for responsible. Make sure that the outcome you want, the amount you're prepared to pay, the terms and conditions you might impose and accept are responsible. They do good for the organization you represent and they are likely to be fair for the counterparty to the negotiation and for any other stakeholders. And finally, T for time frame. Think about the time frame within which you want to negotiate. Also think about the time frame over which the agreement is likely to extend. Some negotiations are about a short one-off transaction. Others are about a long lasting relationship and a contract that can go into years and years. Thinking about the right time frame, not only for conducting the negotiation, but for the outcome is important. The next thing to think about is your bottom line, your walk away limit. The point at which if the offer is insufficiently good, you will just walk away from the negotiation knowing there is no point. 
And a term I like very much is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement, BATNA, coined uh, by Fisher and Urey in the book Getting to Yes. The best alternative to a negotiated agreement is what you would do if the negotiation failed or if you couldn't enter into the negotiation in the first place. What would you do instead? Any terms, conditions, any outcome and cost that comes out of your negotiation which leaves you in a worse position than your best alternative to a negotiated agreement is effectively a negotiation about how much you're going to lose. Knowing your BATNA gives you your walk away point, your bottom line. If an offer is made during the negotiation which is below your BATNA, it doesn't mean you immediately get up and walk away, but it does mean you know that if you can't raise the offer above your BATNA, above that bottom line, then you will have to walk away and you can tell the counterparty that that's the case. You won't share with them your walk away point because then they might raise their offer a smidge above it. But telling them that they are still well below the point where you're going to have to walk away will make them think twice. Next, draw up a table, a comparison between your position and interests and their position and interests. The sorts of things that I would include on this table are what I need and what I think they need, what I want and what I think they want, my priorities and what I think are their priorities, what I already have and what they already have, and what I could offer and what I think they could offer, and the value of what I think I could offer and the value of what I think they could offer. All of this gives you your negotiating parameters, the variables within the negotiation. And it's important that for each of these, you know the value to you and the value to them, because it's the differential values that are usually the basis for agreeing a fair and equitable settlement. If something is worth more to me than it is to the other party, then I'm going to be prepared to pay an amount that satisfies them. And likewise, if I can offer them something that is worth more to them than it is to me, then I have something I can trade to gain a good agreement. The next thing to think about is your opening position. Have the confidence to prepare a high initial position to state as an outcome. Almost certainly the other party will do the same and you will both know that that's the case. But it does delineate the maximum negotiating room. Now, clearly, if these are too far apart, it is possible that somewhere in the middle is a point where a negotiation could reach, but neither of you are prepared to accept. We'll come to that in another video. But knowing your initial position is vital. The other two positions you need to know, of course, are your bottom line and in between your initial position and your bottom line is where you think you are likely to end up an acceptable position. And this is going to be a range, of course. Now you've thought about where you want to end up, it's time to think about how you're going to get there and to do the hard work. Look in the dictionary. Preparation comes before success. And there's a lot of hard work to do. And a big chunk of it is research. Research into the history of your organization's relationship with their organization. Look into the people that are concerned. Find out as much as you can about them. Use publicly available information like LinkedIn to find out a bit about the people you're going to be working with and ask people who might know them. And then think about the context. Research into the organization they represent and its suppliers, its customers, its competitors, its competitive market, what it provides, the range of its services. All of that could provide valuable information, knowledge and even leverage in your negotiation. And what about the culture of their organization? And perhaps even the internal politics? What does that tell you about 
how you can approach the negotiation to maximum advantage. And finally, facts and data. Make sure you have all of that at your fingertips. And a big part of your preparation must be to organize that data so that if you need to access it quickly during a negotiation, you can find it quickly either on your computer, your personal device, your tablet, your phone, or in folders and files. And you must have it in a form that you can read it off quickly, but where the counterparty can't see necessarily what it is you're looking at, because that knowledge may give them an advantage in the moment. Next, you need to think about your plan for the process of negotiation. What are the options and alternatives you have? And what is the sequence of your preferences and priorities among them? What concessions can you make? What concessions can you ask for? What are the long term considerations for the relationship and how important is the relationship compared to the immediate outcome of the negotiation? And what issues do you enter the negotiation with? And what issues do you foresee arising during the negotiation? And once you've thought about the plan, now you need to think about the tactics for the negotiation itself, the immediate day to day and minute to minute factors of the negotiation, like where the meeting is going to be held, who's going to come along to the meeting, the roles they're going to play, the timings, how you're going to signal to colleagues that it's time for a timeout, the sequence with which you want to handle particular issues and what you'll do to cope with setbacks. And finally, prepare your opening. Think about and discuss how you're going to start the negotiation process off when you meet the other party. So there's a lot to do to prepare for any negotiation, but perfect preparation prevents poor performance. If you want good results from your negotiation, it will pay you to prepare well. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come. So please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.